You're on TV. Okay, so this, this uh, problem was maybe a little more complicated than I wanted it to be. Uh, so, but I'll, I'll walk through. There's, there were at least three solutions people came up with. Um, so the basic idea was, uh, I'll show you the cases. If we had one comma one comma one comma one, like this is one pump. And if we had one comma two comma two comma three comma four comma four, that's two clumps. And you know one two three four five is zero clumps. Understand the basic idea. Um, and so the the way of thinking about what we were going to do, the strategy we we're going to follow, is that we would look. And we would take a number and look for the previous one. So 2, is that different than 1? It is. So we skip that. 2 is the same. So here's a clump, right? We found one because these two are the same number. So that's a clump. And then the trick is we have to skip. Okay. Because if we just kept counting, we would end up with too many clumps. Because for the case where it's like 2, 2, 2, um, this is just one clump. It says two or more. Um, so the idea was if we find a clump, then we skip the next and then we get here. Okay. So I'll show you the different approaches people took to do that. Um, So we loop over our x's. We're going to need to keep track of how many clumps we have, so we'll just call it so that's going to be our counter. And then for each number in, in the list here, um, we're going to keep track of the current and previous. So So here's our first error. Uh, what's the problem with this code? It's going to blow out of zero. Exactly. So we need to start at one and not zero. So uh, the, the reason there, reasoning there is if we have a list of, of, of one number, it doesn't matter what's inside there. No clumps. Because a clump has to be at least two. So we can skip that case, right? We don't have to worry about that. Um, so we can start at one. Uh, so what happens if, if the list is empty, or the list only has one item? We don't do anything in the loop, and we just return zero, okay? Sorry, it's got that. We just return zero, because the loop never does anything. Oh, and that's fine, that's the right answer, so. Okay, so we get our current and previous, if they're the same, uh, then we found a clump, so we say clumps plus plus. Okay, so the problem with this is that now we're gonna have the duplicates, because for the case where there was, you know, two, 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 uh, we're going to end up with one pump, two pump, three pumps. But there's only one pump, so that's wrong. Uh, so to fix that, a couple different ways we could do that. One is we could use a for loop here. So we could say uh, we don't have any condition for the left side because we're going to reuse i. And we're going to say i less than. <coughs> and then we're going to get current and previous again. And then if they're different, we're going to break, okay? So this is going to uh, find, we're going to uh, skip all the numbers that are the same until we find one that's different, and then break out of this loop and go back to the top, okay? So that's one way to do it. I think the duplicate loops here might be a little confusing. So a better strategy might be to use a mode. And so basically, we're going to have two modes. Uh, one mode when we're looking for clumps, and another mode when we're skipping. So we can say in clumps. Can we just walk through the logic on current equals previous for a moment? Uh, so if. Yeah, that was 14. You're right. Because I, I see, so like, you know, i is 0, we look at the first element. Or, sorry, i is 1, we look at the, the current previous, 0 and 1, we compare them. If they're equal, we increment clumps, and then we come down to 12. And since they were equal, we're going to run through again. And when we run through again, i is still at 1, correct, at line 12? Yeah. And so then we're 
we're looking at current and previous again, which is 0 to 1 again, right? And if current, oh, so you change it to not equal. If the first is wrong. equal, I'm like, what the heck? No, it's equal not making any sense to me. No, no, not equal. When yeah, you, not equal. I said it right, but wrote it wrong. Yeah, yeah, as soon as it's not equal, then you break out. Yeah. And, then, and then I keeps incrementing until it's no longer equal, right? I goes from 1 to 2 to 3, and then, okay, no longer equal, and then we go back up to the top. Yeah. And, uh, and I is now four. Right? Start looking for pumps again. Oh, okay, that's cool. Okay, so that's that's one way. That's, and then, that's the thing about these algorithm things, man. So it's like a whole new, it's, a, it's, a, it's its own way of thinking. But once you get it, it's really clever. I'll stop talking. Yeah, if you really want clever, try to look at the encryption algorithm sometime. You wonder what they were drinking when they came up with this. If I really want clever, I want to download your version. <laughs> Uh, so the, the uh, other way is to use this mode. So if we're in clumps, that means we're skipping when they're the same. So we, we move this current into not equal three, right? Uh, and then in clumps becomes false. Else, if for equal three, then in clumps becomes true. And then in addition to that, we increment clumps. And that's the other way to solve this. Okay, so this is like our mode, mode flag. It's indicating which mode we're in. So if we're in the looking, uh, if we're in the all, we're already in hunt mode, then we just skip. So this is the, if they're different, then we go back to looking for clumps. Okay, and this is the otherwise we're, we're looking for clumps. So if they're the same, that means oh we found a clump. So we increment the clumps and then go to this mode. And so basically this makes it so we don't. So you can see the different ways. Bob had a different way. Yeah, I put it up on Scratch. Okay, so let's look at that. Because I thought that Could was you also throw that up on Scratch, too, if you don't mind? Sure, this, oh, this guy. So I'll put it at the end here. Uh, okay. So... It works with the start to shoot. Yeah, Bob! So the, uh, the idea here starts at 2, so you start here, it looks at the, uh, that one to the one before it, so 2 and 1, so if they're not equal and these two are equal, you found a clump, okay? Oh, well, that's cool. So then he goes to the next, and so what's cool about that is since these are the same, he doesn't count this clump, he only counts this clump. So it's sort of the backwards of what I was doing, right? So this is a clump. Um, that's the same as what we were doing. But it's, in our case, we were counting that as a clump. He's counting that as a clump, OK? But see how it results in the same behavior. You still get the right number in the end. Except this is shorter. This is a shorter code. So. What happens if you get rid of that clump at 8 at the end, so it just ends in a clump? Yeah, that's interesting. What happens if it ends in a clump? That's a good question. <laughs> Maybe that doesn't work. <laughs> well, special case. <laughs> it's it's special case. Good, man. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think it, 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 it maybe doesn't work if there's only two things. And I think by fixing that case, it would probably fix the case when there's only two things as well. So, so there needs to be a slightly different to this. But the, the, I think the approach is right. It's just you have to add a number at the end or something. It is very clever, though. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was a little harder than I, I had hoped it would be. But hopefully, not too bad. If you were like completely lost by that, that's okay. Most web programming doesn't involve things like this, so uh, it'd probably be okay. So let's uh, let's move on to some new new things uh, because I think we've done enough problems this morning. Um, a moment, a moment. Uh, I'll just start. Yeah, it's on the scratch. Scroll down. Yeah, it's at the bottom. Oh, okay. 